Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Rex. I'm Daniel. He's a level three whiskey smoker. He's a master mooch. And we're picking our own and then doing some random stuff at the end today. I'm just confirming we haven't done this before. Things get complicated. We've definitely done Bren before. Well, Bren, but not yeah. Black Bull. No, we've not done Black Bull before. We, we did Black Bull cameo. We, we did? Oh, yeah. Gonna be okay, everyone. You know what? We may have done this five times already. This is such a shit show. This is just it's such- It's Friday, it's, it's Friday. It's so haphazard. It's Friday, it's been a long week. And I told, I told Daniel, look man, Friday episodes make it like a big deal whiskey. They make it a good whiskey. People go into the weekend, they're gonna check out the whiskey stuff. You can get this everywhere. Can you get it everywhere? Yeah, Black Bull. I don't know if it's- It's a Duncan Taylor blended budget whiskey. Okay, so uh, Black Bull is a budget line uh, Kylo is the brand. This is Duncan Taylor and they named it. So it's a blended scotch. There's going to be a mix of malt and grain, mm -hmm. right? I stumbled onto this by accident and it now lives in my house all the time if I can help it. Right. Again, it's just a generally friendly Highland single malt right. blend or a blend with malts and uh, grains. And, but it presents as a malt versus a grain. Sure. And it presents heavy butterscotch. And within these batch of this batch of episodes where I'm wearing this red shirt, there's like three or four episodes, Daniel's gonna be giving most of the notes. Yeah. Because so I've had this before and I'm not getting out of it what I what I did. Yeah. There's a slight sourness to it this time that I don't normally get. But it's still got all the sweetness. I like that they bottled this one at 50. In our area, oh come on, that's just a Dude, that's just an everyday pick it up, damn it, that's good. Um, it's so, got the dense sweetness of a space side ish kind of malt. Am I getting some smokiness? Yeah, there's okay. a little bit of a bite to it. Right. Um, but it's getting the brightness of a grain whiskey. Okay. Combined with all the dark butterscotch notes. So, so I want to, just the slight smokiness, the thing I want to compare it to sheep dip. Sheep dip. Sheep dip, slight bit of smokiness. Let's compare it to the sheep dip. Okay. Because that's another one that has. Now the sheep is a blended malt, and the youngest whiskey is 16 years old. Whoa. But so this is, sheep dip is a step up. But it's a step up, but I believe sheep dip is also 40%, if I remember correctly. It is, yeah, it is 40%. 40%. So, this is a 50% younger whiskey compared to a 40% older whiskey. Oh, wow, they're very similar. Hmm. They're very similar. See, even hobbled. I'm better at this than Daniel. Uh, it's smoother. So it's it's a little flatter. Sheep dip is a little flatter and finishes with more pepper and more or more, or more ash, actually. Yeah. A little more ash. Definitely the same wheelhouse, though. Yeah, but Black Bull is bigger up front as more of a rounded caramely note and then finishes thin. So they sort of have inverse trajectories. Uh, sheep dip slightly thin, ends in a more no. whoosh. And Black Bull goes, starts round and then thins out at the end. I love the taste of whoosh. What if we mix them together? Well, just hold on. Just what you put. You, Too uh, late. We'll use this for something else. What if I wonder if we either round it out or we get thin from both? Amateur. Amateur. Ooh, we got thin from both. That is weird. I thought it would round it out. It made both of them thin. Yeah. It tastes flat now, like a flat soda. It does, like, yeah. It's just dead. Even me being a little bit... We killed it. Hobbled. That's not... Uh, damn. Uh, pulling some questions out of the Facebook group here. Going sliding, sliding up until we randomly come across something. Wait, 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 wait. Wait and, for and, it. Uh, oh, here's the question you always avoid. It's the question you always avoid, Daniel. Oh, really? Always. If you could have one last dram of whiskey. Oh, I always avoid that because f that question. <laughs> I hate that question. That you have never tried, but always wanted to try. See? Different question. What would it uh, be? What whiskey haven't you tried that you always wanted to try? Uh, is this like having dinner with a historical person? Does it have to be real this or is available? Jason Cam's question. What whiskey? Jason. One last whiskey. You've never tried it though. 
You want to try? I want to try what Lagavulin tasted like back in the early 1900s when people were first drinking Lagavulin. Oh, interesting. Right. I want to taste the first 16-year-old Lagavulin ever. Right. I want to basically, whenever, in the future, when it inevitably happens, you are at the lowest point in your life. You have no money, no friends, no family, and you have one single pour of whiskey left oh. to your name. I want to take that bottle from your decrepit hands <laughs> and pour it into my glass. Kick my cane out from underneath me. Oh. And lock eyes with you, unblinking, <laughs> as I drink it in one shot. <laughs> Dude, this is the fruitiest smelling whiskey. So, Benjamin Ross sent us Bryn. Oh, Bryn. Oh, now, we, here's the problem. I think we reviewed Bryn. We reviewed Bryn before, right. but Benjamin... You're a badass. You did send us a kick-ass whiskey. Was this a magnificent a full bastard? bottle. That makes Benjamin a magnificent bastard. Benjamin Ross. Benjamin Ross, you magnificent bastard. Now granted, now, you're a French bastard. So. Yeah. <laughs> Which is an extra kind of bastard. Here you go. Smell that. Oh my god, this is a sweet tart. Yes. This is, this comes flooding this back. This is the most fruity. How many months ago was this? Yes, this and was maybe a, more than a year ago. Wow. Oh. This was maybe in the first three, four months of the Like the, of the powdered sugar of sweet tarts just immediately. Yeah. I'm not even 100% right now, and it's jacking me with the sweetness yeah. on the nose. A banana, fruit, cinnamon. Wow. It's it's a desserty wow thing all the way through. Oh, man. You what? know what it is? It reminds me of uh, the other day. We were in downtown, or not downtown, but we were just trying to get out of the house. Yeah. We went down to South Congress, and they have that comp that uh, candy shop called Big Top Okay. on South Congress. Sure. You ever been in there? I have three children. It's I, an, I have been nowhere. It's an old school candy shop where it's like bins and bulk candies. Are they doing the candy get, machine? Yeah. Okay. They do all kinds of shit. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we went in there, and... That smell of the candy shop was chocolate mixed with this. Oh. Uh, it's so just a candy shop. That smell makes me feel like I'm getting cavities in real time. Yeah, and it tastes, it tastes, it tastes like Pez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, you know what we need to, because we haven't compared yet. We were having a discussion as to which was the sweeter whiskey. Oh, Texas Blended. Texas Blended or the Bryn French Whiskey. And it's up in the air, man. And where's the Texas Just blend? based on this Bryn right now, I think the Bryn can take it. What whiskeys do you stock your home bars with? Top, uh, top three, specifically. What, uh, what's your home bar whiskeys? Uh, right now, it changes constantly. So here's my rule with home bars. Oh, wait, name. Uh, that was Ian Van Gorder. Ian Van Gorder. So, Ian, the problem with that comparison is uh, I use my home bar as an exploration device, not as a uh, comfort food. Mm -hmm. uh, although I'll almost always have one PD whiskey as my comfort, but it changes. So uh, Lagavulin 116 is obviously a standard. Um, Brooklodic is a standard. Boonhaven 12 is a standard for PD stuff, right? Or Brooklodi, sorry, everyone. Right. Everyone freaks out when I add CH to the end of Brooklodi. Um, so right now, all you can ask me is right now, because by the month, it changes completely. See, to me, Texas Blended is a vanilla latte. That's a vanilla latte. This is just a sharp, no holds barred, raw Candy shop. sugar sweetness. Yeah. The Bryn is. And try that one. And this is vanilla. This is melted vanilla ice cream, if I remember. Yeah, if it's I re melted bluebell ice cream with a hint of coffee. Damn, that's sweet. That creamy vanilla, man. But that's still sweeter. The Bryn is even sweeter, if you can believe it. It make your teeth hurt. It's so sweet. Oh, no comparison. Damn. Yeah. Damn. It actually makes the Texas blended taste more like whiskey. Wow. Wow, it's liquefied. Again, it's just liquefied. I'm going back to Black Bull. <laughs> so, what happens if you mix them? Oh, just, just, yeah. Whoa, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, dude, try that. The sweetest whiskey. In it's the ice cream with a whole bunch of candy poured all over it. Yeah, like it's like going to one of those frozen yogurt shops. It's like a sundae. And just adding all this to it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Oh. Damn. Yeah. That's Sorry, okay. Benjamin. I hope you like it. Well, man, if you like sweets, if you got a sweet tooth, 
What do we have a whiskey yeah, for you? We got a winner. Uh, uh, so right now, remember I said it depends on which month you ask me? Sure. Right now, what's at my house is nothing. And I'm not joking. Last night, I poured the last of the whiskey in my house, and it was Abelor 12. Yeah. And I'm not even sure why I had Abelor 12 in my house, but I did. <laughs> and we poured the last of it, and just now, before we started shooting, my wife texted me, are you planning on bringing more whiskey home? <laughs> because I don't have any whiskey in my house at all right now. I've got a bunch of tequila, a bunch of rums, and about 30 bottles of cocktail mixers. But I got no whiskey. So, no, it, like I'm kind of like you. The standards aren't really standards because I'm just getting random stuff. Yep. Uh, but what I have in my house right now, I'm not out. Uh, I had Lagavulin 16. Then I mooched from Daniel. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He mooched from that. was an elaborate mooching. It was, it was a thing of beauty. <laughs> like the wheels were in motion, multiple factions. I didn't involved, even know. And then it just landed in my lap. It's like this is exactly what I set in motion a week earlier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then I have, um, I got some Wyoming whiskey. And then I have, um, what is that rye? Is it Willard? What is the Willet? Will it ride? Will it ride? Yeah, the cask estate. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. And I re recently finished off some um, Nectar Dior. What is that? Glen Mor uh, Glen, Glen Morangy. Uh, Nectar Dior. I will tell that you. That is really new. Eat your though. heart out, Rex. What I did have in my house until two days ago mm -hmm. was a full sample selection from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Association. Okay. Which is a an association in Scotland that bottles rare and exclusive caskings and releases them independently. And I'm one of the members, got the little lapel pin, right. and I ordered the sample one. And so we, the last night we tried two uh, bottlings, one they called Jekyll and Hyde, mm -hmm. and one they called uh, Jam, something in Jam. Hmm. Yeah, that well, was that's really a, nice. That's fine, you can have. But that's ex freakishly expensive whiskey. That's fine. Uh, it's good that you mentioned you're out of whiskey. I am out of whiskey. Because I have been planning an episode on the Whiskey Tribe channel for a while. Okay. Where I just show up at your house while you're not home and drain your s*** dry. Ah, well, there's nothing to drain. I know. So, thank you for saving, <laughs> saving me the trip. Right. I will wait until you replenish the reserves. All right. <laughs> uh, one more, David E. Foshi. Foshi, is there any way you can mention in your reviews the degree of availability, availability of some whiskeys? No. I've never seen any bottles mentioned in the past week. Plus, granted, some small Midwest towns aren't particularly friendly for whiskey searches, but I'd like to know if there's any chance at all of finding something fun and different. So, here's what we're trying to do. The answer is no, because availability of it's just it's really up to your local the market. most unpredictable thing we could pause it's that's worse than pricing totally up to your local liquor store yeah now yeah. W when we are reviewing all the gifts you guys send us, well I said I'm not totally up to in large part because some liquor stores want stuff mm -hmm. but they don't have the even the option to buy it until they move enough of a certain product yeah then and some are state controlled right you may have noticed that as we've started to do more of the things you guys have sent in that there's no way on earth anyone's going to be able to buy. We are comparing them to things that we really love. And no, that's bit more why we're doing it. Readily available to Yeah, you. we're trying to do that because we do want to work, work our way through the gifts. But, you know, no one's going to be able to buy any of these things. <laughs> I, say, I said, hey, Daniel, this is, like, this is uh, 10 minutes before the shoot. Yeah. What would happen if we just did, like, you know, every other episode was an obscure gift, and then yeah. we do something that's readily available? Yeah. Daniel was saying at the rate things are coming in, we would be backing up stuff yeah. indefinitely. If we only shot two to three of weird, random, hard-to-find gifts a week... Not that I'm complaining. We would be losing ground by <laughs> about three or four bottles a week. Which is amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sending us stuff. Uh, but we, we're serious about it. People send us stuff. We want to be able to get to it. And get There's it a reason reviewed. we're doing all the weird stuff. Unless it's a rep and then you just get on the back burner indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If the reps start trying to pretend to not... Now, if a rep's a real rep, like two bar, yeah. hey, we're going to send you something. Feel free to shit on it all day long. <laughs> right? But if, the ones if that, someone's trying to pretend to be a fan and I just want to send you a whiskey so and we let know me, let me say, you're a rep... Let me say this. Uh, Terry Dolan, the legend... Mm -hmm. In the whiskey tribe, he's an, he's an admin. 
uh, in the in the social media groups. Uh, this guy is like Sherlock's got Holmes. Yeah, he is Sherlock Holmes. He can smell an imposter a mile away. Mm -hmm. And the thing that he is able to piece together is like I saw somebody post something and it didn't seem quite right. So I looked into them and their background and I did this Google search and I pieced these. And then he has yeah. like this, this board, this wall of strings attached yeah. to pictures <laughs> and names. And then I found out it was a rep that we kicked out for spamming the tribe. Yeah. And he signed on to his son's account. And now uh, he's doing, oh my God, Terry, I would never want to get on your bad side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you're a rep, you're welcome to join the tribe. Just yeah. tell us you're a f***ing rep. Just don't. Just start by saying, hey guys, I'm a rep for these guys. Just so you know. Yeah, don't try and be like, hey, here's this thing that I'm authentically and organically excited about. Isn't it grand? Oh my God. Here's a link because I have to, because copyright. That's called phoning it in as That's an not called phoning. It's not called phoning it in. It's called straight up bullshit. Yeah, as an employee, that's just work. So they it. get kicked out immediately. And, and on that note, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight me, you fight for. If me. you steal me, you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may you drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the whiskey vault. Don't forget to throw on a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.